Gentlemen, the Functional Gentlemen. We're your hosts, Roy Gravis, Bucky Pender. No producer in producer's corner. What? <laughs> I am the producer. Oh, yeah. Bucky is the producer. <laughs> Bucky's pulling double duty tonight. John, yeah. John had something come up last minute, so we're not going to hold that against him. Nah. We understand it's a thing called life. We all do it. For sure. Fantastic. So you had an interesting yeah. day today. <laughs> Buddy, I don't understand how you do it day in and day out. I was up at 4 o'clock this morning, made the hour and 45-minute drive to Conroe, and then drove back home, and now I'm here to do this. And all, I'm ready to go night night. All in Betty White. <laughs> all in Betty White. Nice. Betty White made it. No issue. She, she did. Fantastic. She made it. <laughs> she's she's a tough old gal. Yes, she that is. Betty White. What's up, Duff? Oh, we got Duff. Duff's yeah. In the house. Duff, Duff. Duff's my buddy from way back. He lives in the woodlands. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. So we got a bunch of stuff on the table. See, si, senor. As always, we got two bottles this week from our dear friends at Rabbit Hole Distillery in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. He actually made it this week. I'm impressed. He normally watches on the replay, but. Oh, really? Yeah, but we're all good. He's live. Fantastic. I talked to Ronnie today. Ronnie's supposed to be live at some point with us. Cool. Um, who knows who else is involved? I have no idea. Well, they'll trickle in because we never run on time, which is a good thing for us. Yes, tag the good people at Rabbit Hole. Yes, I will tag them because we're watching. They'll see it. We're watching. They're, they're watching. Who we're watching. Somebody, and they're... Somebody's watching it. I don't know. It's been a long ass day. I'm not gonna lie. KZ Rabbit Hole. That guy. Yeah. That guy. That guy. That dude right there. Oh, drink doesn't have an E in it. Yeah, drink does not have an E in it. But first, we have mail. I felt like doing the Blues Clues song. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. Mail! And yet, I didn't have to do the Blues Clues song at all. (laughs) fan fucking fantastic. (laughs) So we have mail from Mr. Jeremy Smith. We're going to open your mail. This is our mail call segment, which we're starting tonight in honor of Mr. Jeremy Smith. And actually, both of these on the table are mail calls. Yes, they are, because Emily with uh, Rabbit Hole is who sent us Shout out, Emily. She's freaking awesome. Yes, she is. How cool is she? She sent us not one, but two bottles. Two full-size bottles. Yes, two full-size bottles. We were just wanting media samples. Yes. (laughs) That's kind of what you expect in this. So I'm curious on what this is. Oh, okay. there's, There's... there's, there's paper. There's paper. We got paper. Is there a note written on the paper? Does paper? not appear so. The paper's in a funny shape. That is a weird... No okay. one. Anyways, move on. Moving move on. on. Oh, now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of it. Okay. Meat and taters. There's bubble wrap. There's more funny shaped paper. <laughs> I like that he addressed it to the functional gents. <laughs> yeah. No. Didn't put, put gentlemen, put gents. No, nah, functional gents. It works. That's what it is. My mail le- lady found out. She's like, you know, you've lived here since whenever. And <laughs> I've never, I've seen, never that. seen anything addressed like this. It's like, it's a long story. I'll explain yeah. later when you got more time. So I'm excited about this one because I... Pretty sure I know what it is based off of Jeremy's comment. Well, I hope there's a note with it because otherwise we're going to be drinking something out of whatever that we don't know what it is. <laughs> well, if it's what I think it is, this should be Oh, it's labeled. Two <laughs> It's labeled. Is it Fantastic. is it two two bottles? It, I think it's three. Oh, well, I don't I don't know what the third is uh, then. That makes two of us own either. So uh, I'm guessing two of the three like are mail. the Widow Jane uh, Longhorn store picks that we had talked about cuz I mentioned I was doing the blending thing this month. Oh, please don't break. Yeah, please don't break them. Try not to. So, bottle number one is Half Blend Whistle Pig. Oh. The sequel. <laughs> okay. And Half Blend Isaac Bowman Portfish. Ooh. Okay, so there's one. So blend. he went ahead and blended. So he them went for ahead us. and blended, yes. Awesome. He went ahead and blended. Shout out, Jeremy. Thank you so much yes, for these. We like blending. Oh, the squill. <laughs> Whistle Pig, the squill. I thought it was the 13, sequel. 13 year. Oh. Okay, this is the Widow Jane blend, which is half Widow Jane 12-year Longhorn pick and half Widow Jane 10-year high rye. I'm excited Oak about Longhorn that picks. one. There's you for that one. Yeah. And number three, good Lord, I feel like my bed's going to be calling early after this kind of stuff. <laughs> I know mine is. This one is a <laughs> Rock say. Hill Farm single barrel hundred proof. Oh, is what this oh, one that's is. the one we could. I can't find. Yeah. yeah. So this is the Rock Hill. Sweet. Okay. So that one's not a blend, but I am excited to try. That. Yes, we're excited. Yeah. 
So, so twenty-four stuff. million dollar question is, oh, I where got do, a cigar. Where Hold do up. we where do we start? <laughs> we start with the uh, smoke of the week. <laughs> smoke of the week. Duff, of the Duff week. said two for you, one for me. <laughs> two for two for me. Okay, I like it. Yeah. Two, two for you, one for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We get it. <laughs> smoke of the week this week is the Rocky Patel Tyvictus. Evening, Clint. Yes. Oh, Clint's in the house. Yeah. Fantastic. I we could tell when it's Clint because he comments the most. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like I said, Rocky Patel, Ty Victus. Oh, yeah, pretty. I like the. I'm. I. I don't know why, but I've been in the whole royal blue thing lately. Yeah, I know. It's a. It's a good looking band for sure. It's very good looking, very elegant. This is a San Andreas wrapper with a Nicaraguan binder and filler, and it is one of the. T- it was a top twenty five cigar of the year award, and a ninety plus rated. It doesn't say what year, though. Fantastic. Good job, Cigar International. This is why I don't reference you guys oh much gosh. these days. I've been in the mood, man. I'm not going to lie. I know. We, we've had, You've we've, been on one. We've had troll incidences on the Facebook page. We had <laughs> people that are bigger and badder than what they think they are in the emails. I mean, it's... it's Oh, that's such a good one, Clint. All of, what did he say? The Four Roses uh, Single Barrel Longhorn Ooh, Select. Yeah, that is a good one. That's so good. That's it's aged 10 years, one. 7 months. Sorry, I'm... S- inter- I, I'm 67 days and all I'm, that good stuff. I'm yeah. diving into your... Your portion. I'm sorry. No, sir. you're good. Um, like I said, it, it's a Rocky Patel. I mean, you can't go wrong with Rocky Patel. The story of it is it's celebrating Rocky's home base, which Rocky's home base is Astilla, Nicaragua. That's why this is a completely Nicaraguan, except for the fact that it's a San Andreas. Well, it's a Nicaraguan San Andreas, right. so I guess we can go good. I'm going to try and do the small punch on this one. Oh, yeah? <clears throat> oh, look at that. It pulled it out nicely. Very nice. I don't think I'm going to use the small one from now on. A little bit of yep. There we go. A little bit. Do you want a punch? Or do you want a V? Or what do you want to do? Because you got I'll the. I'll take my V. Take I do. I, I normally just do a V. I'll take my V. Yeah. I take my V. But yeah, I mean, I, I'll get to the notes on the second. It is a f- four out of five on the the Roy Gravis scale. I'm not using Cigar Internationals thing no more. But um, it's a medium full. Not to be okay. he's full body like myself. Right, right, right. So we're gonna fire it. We're gonna light this pig and light see what's pig. up with it. Ooh. Get it, get it. Yep, lighting, work it. Work it. Good flame. Yeah. Yes, I love the triple get jet. It nice and toasty. I don't like the single jets, man. I'm on. Um, I've got some stuff in the works. I, I reached out to a couple of people to send me like different lighters and jazz like that. So hopefully they won't be complete ass hats about it and just send me a lighter. Or in some cases, a cigar dagger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nearly as much as Roy, but I can tell you I am smoking a Kentucky Fire Cured. It is a 4x52. What did I say? 4x46 or something? Something like that. You're, you're a 4x46. I'm a 5.5x50. Yeah. There you go. Is where I'm at. And so, I am loving And as you can see, mine is quite a bit smaller <laughs> than Roy's. I roll big. <laughs> Not that we're, you know, measuring or anything. Well, I mean, if the, <laughs> in this case, if the cigar fits. <laughs> um, but the, to just real quick, while we both kind of are doing this, I, if I'm not mistaken, Clinton, you since you have the bottle right in front of you, I believe that's the OESV uh, mash bill. Is that the one that we did years. with Mike Wright? Yeah, he okay. brought it on the show. I, I bought a bottle yeah. whenever they did the release. Um, it was just that good. I was heading out of town. I did not get an opportunity I, to buy a bottle. I mean, I was at the drop that they had yeah. it at, but I did not buy a bottle because of the fact that I was going out of town. I shared my bottle with a buddy of mine uh, for his birthday that I've shouted out last week, Matthew. Nice. Because uh, he's a, he likes the Four Roses Small Batch Select. How was the gang at Texas Marine without you today? I got a bunch of phone calls. Um, <laughs> you always get a bunch of phone calls. But what else is new? I like this one. For me, it's it's probably one of the better Rocky Patels that I've had in a while. I mean, because yeah. you can never go wrong with, like, his his Disciples pretty good, his uh, Vintage 1990. You know, they're all pretty good. This one by, this one's the best one I've had in a while by Rocky Patel. So, really? yeah, good job, Rocky. You're doing it, son. I love it. Fantastic. You're doing it. <laughs> yep. Like, but um, like he's not a big name. Oh, in the cigar I know, game. right? Not at all. <laughs> I, the, the one thing I don't understand though is they don't give you really a whole lot of flavor notes. So this is going to really? be a complete me on the flavor note thing. So 
I took a deep breath and I laughed at the same if time. If you ain't choking, you ain't choking. Well, I took a breath and <laughs> chuckled at myself. <laughs> oh, that was kind of funny. Okay. Okay. I, I get I get the leather. I get a lot of leather. So, okay. I get bittersweet coca. Just a hint. Not too much. Real earthy. Real dark. The wrapper's a beautiful coloration. I love yeah. the coloration of the wrapper. For a San Andreas, I like it. Like I said, awesome. San Andreas has always been that kind of thing that perplexes my palate a little bit. Yeah. But I feel I got this one pretty much on point. Turn this down. Do you, do you, uh, I don't know if you follow him on TikTok, but James from uh, Mont Bellevue Cigar and Whiskey Society. I need to add. I, th- I don't know if I do or not. I need to double <laughs> so check that. So I follow him on TikTok, and I think he posted it on their uh, Facebook page, but he did. I don't even know how to search on here. I need to go hang out with James one weekend when I'm in Mount Bell. So I don't know if you saw it, but he did um, a giant cigar. Oh, I did see that one. I think that's the April Fool's one, I think. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I did see that. The thing was like this big. Yes. Did yeah, you see that I thing? I saw it. it was, I'm pretty it, sure it's on. It Facebook. put the Texas Lancero that I did last year to shame. Yes. The Texas Lancero was a 770. I got a switch. Hang on. But yeah, I saw what you're talking about. That one was real slender and it was long. And that's what she said. So. You beat me to it. I was hoping I don't. And James, if you tune in or you're watching, yeah, for sure. Definitely. I would. I want to know the. Um, I love the fact that we got all the this stats. stuff on the table. I want to know the stats on that big old thing. I, I do too, because that thing looked like it was a quarter mile long. Like it was ridiculously long. It took him a total of six and a half hours. Jesus, to smoke long, it. That's a long time to sit there and smoke a cigar. But I mean, look at look, you have look a, how long it is. Did you have a meal in between? Is what I want to know. <laughs> did, was there like a break like, where you <laughs> ate for thirty minutes, or I mean, did you go fifteen minutes? Did you go three hours, take a fifteen minute break, go the other three hours, take a fifteen minute break? I mean, what? what I wish I would have. I, I want to get the. He I went wanna, live on tick on his TikTok for a portion of it, and I, I wish I would have got to tune in, but but I didn't have a chance to. We might have to bring James in on an episode. <laughs> but that thing was just ridiculously It was, dude. I saw ridiculous. that, and I was like, there's no way. And then when you when you told me it was like a six-and-a-half-hour smoke, I'm like, yeah, I'm, no. I've never <laughs> – it's called the Woody. Interesting. Yeah. And he said it actually wasn't bad. Well, that's, I mean, that, that's you, always you the big think, thing with that long you worry. Because even like the Texas Lancero, which is – Still super freaking long. It's seven inches, yeah. I mean, even something like that, You at what point do you sacrifice flavor to make it look really freaking cool? Yeah. No, I get, <clears> I get you. I get you completely. I get you completely. But, yeah, we like I said, we've got some interesting stuff going on. We got bottles to review. We got just kind of a random. We, we figured we'd do a random episode after our two weeks of whiskey school that we did. So. <laughs> yeah. We're just kind of kicking back tonight. Y'all chime in. Um, as you'll see in the description, we're talking about headlines that we've seen. So whether it's sports-related, pop culture-related, whatever it may be, if y'all have seen something that you want to talk about tonight, uh, drop it in the comments, and, and we'll give our opinions on it if we have any. Yep. I feel like we got some opinions on some stuff. But first. Seven inches is a lot. That's what she <laughs> – <laughs> I love it. I wouldn't know. <laughs> No. Clint said he's good for an hour and a half, and then he's done. Yeah? Okay. I feel there's a little bit of embellishment <clears throat> going on there, but, hey, who knows? I mean, <laughs> as you can see, you give me five minutes, and, I, and I'm good. <laughs> it's a race, and I'm winning. <laughs> yeah. well, what's the old adage? You, you better get yours because I'm going to get mine. That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so where do we want to the start? The gentleman after dark. I know, right? <laughs> so where do we want to start? We've got two blends. Yes. We've got a, a straight barrel, per, uh, single barrel. And then we've got the two big boys on the table. I say we start with Rabbit Hole. Let's, okay. give, them, let's give them the due that they, let's give they it to deserve. Them. Let's give it to them. I love it. Fantastic. I'm not even going to pretend to <laughs> know like I'm going to pronounce their founder's name. but So, Kaveh Zamanian. Two puffs. Two puffs that's, that's all she, she gets. gets. <laughs> yes, uh, I love the fact that with ours. <laughs> I'm ex- what what excited me the most about getting these two in the mail. Again, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Rabbit Hole. Yes, this is for awesome. Sure. 
Um, but I mean, you know, as soon as we opened the box, that was one of the first things I said was, man, their founder, Kave Zamanian, just went into the uh, Whiskey Hall of he Fame did. last he year. just went in last year. So yeah. that was, that's really cool. Congratulations to him. Speaking uh, of, y'all see my shirt. <laughs> America runs on whiskey and right. a drunken grown up. Yeah, you, you're always a drunken grown up. Yep, that's what she said. But so, congr- like I was saying, congratulations to Kave. Yes. Um, and we, we hope I, I know we're probably butchering his name, but it's as yeah, close as if, we can get. We're if sorry. I am, I apologize, but I it's it's what I see and it's how I read it. Hooked on phonics did not work for us. <laughs> so what I think is really cool because if you dive into his story, mm-hmm. um, he literally went down the rabbit hole of whiskey. Oh yeah, or bourbon, um, and that's kind of how they got the name because he he took a complete he wanted to take a completely different approach to it. He dove down that rabbit hole. Did his research, did all everything he needed to do to start a whiskey company the right way, and he didn't want to just go out and source his whiskey. He didn't want to just copy somebody else's already successful mash bill. So he came up with his own unique mash bill, and that's kind of where they build off for all of their um, expressions. Which is a good thing for him. I mean, he's you know from what I've read, it's it's it was a, a good story he did it the right way which you and, and there's nothing wrong with doing it the other way i don't want anybody to think i'm, I'm hating on doing it the other way where you right source no, no, your no. juice for so long and then you start doing your own distillate. but it takes a lot i mean it takes a lot to, to want to do it this way because yes it does you start a company and then you're like all right now what yeah i gotta you start wait. it and then you're like i gotta I'm wait at least three years yeah, at least. <laughs> you know two so. years if you want to be able to call it straight but so, I, mean, I mean, that would be like if Bucky and I started a distillery right now and we wanted to do it the right way, we ain't producing nothing until 2026. I'd literally be sitting here going. <laughs> we'd probably be working. On, come on, come on, come on. We'd probably still be doing our regular But, jobs. I mean, and most of these distilleries will do, like, clear spirit. I mean, yes. they'll do vodka or gin or something yes. you can bottle and sell and make a little bit of money while you're yes. you're waiting. Yes. But um, That's so, what our friends at Texas Tail did, from what I understand. They started that way, so. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, um he was actually, I'm going to mess this up, like a psychologist or a psychoanalyst or something prior to doing this. And he was, uh, from what I understood, he was actually really good at his job. But, <clears throat> so, do you want to kind of dive into what we have sitting on the table? And I like that they're doing things different. Like, Rabbit Hole isn't just putting out, you know, Kentucky Straight Bourbon and here it is. Um, they're... They've got a bunch of different expressions. They, they're they all finished a little different. They might have a little bit different mash bill. Mm. You know, they're kind of pushing the boundary on, on what you can do. Do-do, do-do, no, do-do. I'm sorry. I was looking over their, oh. their social stuff real quick, trying to find a little backstory on Mr. Zamani himself. So um, what we have in front of us is both the high gold, Yes. And the Cave Hill. Yes. Correct? Which, uh, yes. What you I'm, have ex- over there. I'm excited about the Cave Hill personally. So, what's cool, and I don't know, and I didn't even, I should have pulled up the Cave Hill, but. So I have the Cave Hill pulled they're, up. They're the names that they give their bourbons. Okay, I don't have that. Um, they're <laughs> actually, well, they're, they I give have the them, Nashville. they give them certain names to um, put a spotlight on, on the history of certain things. So, okay. like the, the, um, Part of, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's this one or that one. I can't remember. Uh-huh. But, like, I, I'm pretty sure it's this one, uh, okay. the high gold. Yeah. The German, it's like German um, barley, I think, uh-huh. is what they use. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this. I'm, I'm not prepared. We switched, like, right before the show. But um, I believe it's the German barley that they're using. Um, and it the high gold comes from an, the name of an immigrant from Germany, if I'm not mistaken. And I really don't want to butcher that, but that, I'm pretty that, sure that that's sounds, that sounds about right. I could, you know, I'm trying to pull up a name origin right now for we the do Cave have, Hill one. We do uh, have where phones and stuff. Okay, so apparently Cave Hill was named after the historic Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville. Okay, see, so is where that one is that, where that particular one comes in. Um. So y'all can see it. It's a pretty blue. Kind of like your cigar band. Uh, so, yeah. 
Named after a German immigrant stone German immigrant stone cutter from the 1800s, okay. Rabbit Hole High Gold Bourbon is inspired by the adventures, innovators, and creators who built the foundation of the country we love. Nice. I like it. Yeah, and it's a mash bill of corn, malted German rye. Sorry, it okay. wasn't the barley. It was the German rye. Okay. And malted barley. Nice. Okay. Fantastic. So, you want to start with the high gold? We can start with the high gold. That's cool. While high I, gold. While I get into the... Ready? The other, um, st- I'm pulling up the Cave Hill stuff right now from them just to make sure I have all my. Sir, you're talking too much. Oh, that's got a good pop. It does have a very good pop. Yeah, <coughs> okay, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, okay. Hmm, that's interesting. Would you like a little pour? Sure, I'll take. I always take a pour. It's it's weird having you do all. I normally do all the pouring. I mean, I slid it over. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm like confused. We're lost. Dis, we're discombobulated just a little bit. There you go, sir. Fresh pop. Yes, it was. Yes, beautiful. Okay, we got three k. What? Three thousand just to get a T. Oh, a Texas Craft Distillers permit. Okay. Then all the other crap you have. Yeah, like nice. The, the TABC, and then you got to deal with the TGB. I figured if anybody would know, it would be Clint. <clears throat> But the, I mean, shoot, most of the cost is up front. I mean, if you're, especially like, let's say we wanted to do kind of like Pursuit United and do a blend of something. Okay. But we wanted to do strictly Texas. So let's say we wanted to do Garrison Brothers, Treaty Oak, and uh, uh, Balconis. Then you got to go and you got to have capital to buy those barrels up front. Yes. So now you're talking thousands of dollars per barrel. Yes. So yeah, it's. So, I mean, the and if you you got to be able to build a distillery, if you're not going to go out and do that, right? So that's not going to be cheap. I don't think we could do it here. No, we. I mean, we got we got plenty of room right here. No, we don't. <laughs> Come on, we don't have plenty of room. We'd have to take in the other part of this, put the distillery in the back, millions up front. Yes, very much so. It, it's expensive. We get it. Yeah, very <laughs> much so. If anybody wants to float us alone, right? <laughs> Hey, Clint, we can go in like halvesies. Five million might get you started. <laughs> might. I'll cut you a check for just, my portion. Just, just don't, don't deposit, cash it till just, Friday. Just don't deposit it until <laughs> February 30th. <laughs> oh, man. So, have you taken a sippy sip yet? I have not. I'm still enjoying <laughs> You all right over there? I'm still enjoying this Ty Victus. Oh, man. All right, so I like the smell. I like the aroma. It smells of it. delicious. It really does. And this is the air gold that we're doing. High gold. High gold. However you pronounce it. Okay. Ooh, I like that one. Got a slight rye spice. Brown sugar. <clears throat> Almost like a. Oatmeal cream pie. It's really sweet. Mm-hmm. It's really sweet. It's got a good little tingle to it on the finish. I feel it under my lip line, if that means anything, like the inside lip line of my mouth. Yeah, a I lot like of brown it. sugar. Yeah, a lot of brown sugar. A lot of brown sugar. It drinks really, real, really. It drinks really well. <clears throat> so we do have some little media notes that they included. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, so for the high gold, let's see. Aroma, sweet, toasted malt tones. I get that. That's, that's pretty spot on on the, the nose. I get a little baking spice, like a almost like a gingerbread cookie. Mm. Uh, palette, butterscotch, bursts of citrus. I don't really get I don't the get, citrus. I don't really get citrus. I do get kind of a butterscotch is, but it's more like well, see, and I think to- that it's goes more like back toasted sugar than what it is, right? So I think that kind of goes back to my my scale of caramel, yeah, where you can start with like burnt ish sugar, mm-hmm. butterscotch, caramel, burnt caramel, brown sugar. Yes, I'm for me, I'm leaning more to that darker end, like mm-hmm. brown sugar. And like oatmeal, the the oatmeal cream pie, little Debbie cookies. Uh, believe me, I have a box in the house. Right now. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that I mean, it. That's what for me at least. That's what I get. It's a ton of sweetness. It's really good. It's got a really good finish. Mm-hmm. Um, not super long. 
No, it's not a real but, long finish, but it's it's just to me it's almost the perfect amount of finish. Like it has enough pepper to let you know. Yeah, there's some that rise there, yes. so that rye peppery, and it, it it warms you all the way down. Yes. You definitely feel it. Um, sitting here talking, I do get a little more of that that peppery note, like mm-hmm. a like a, a almost a softer like pepper. Like I don't know. If, White pepper maybe comes out off a little softer. It's wi- it's really good. It's really good. I feel Willie Burger has something to say about that, but <laughs> hey, hey, I don't think that's theirs. I don't. Are they even in existence still? I don't know. I hadn't heard anything from them in a while. I'm not gonna lie. This is one I would definitely put on my shelf and go back to over and over and over mm-hmm. and over again. No, for sure, it's a good <clears throat> one. It's a very good one. It's very it's very interesting. To me, at least, it's like I said, it's a, it's a perfect combination of sweet and spicy, almost. I don't get a ton of oak. I don't either. I don't get any of the matter of fact. Um, I don't get any of the oak. Of course, I've been kind of half-ass congested the last two days, but so. I wonder if they say anything on here. So, bum ba da dum bum 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 bum. That'll clear you out. <laughs> you get real close. Uh, so it is matured for three years in toasted and charred American white oak barrels. Okay. So, and it goes on to say, the process of toasting before charring is a modern approach to barrel making, allowing allowing deeper whiskey absorption into the barrel, which gives the, this bourbon its deep flavor and caramel color. Tell you what, that Invict, uh, Ty Victus. Yeah. It's pretty good. Is it? It's one of the best Rocky Patels I've had in a while. I'm not going to lie to you one bit, other than the stuff that Rocky Patels like established. Oh, that's kind of cool. I've never, so I love how transparent their website is. If you get a chance, it's pretty transparent. Uh, r- go check out rabbitholedistillery.com. They have their mash bill right on the side of the bottle. Yep. Um, but they're, I mean, they're one hundred percent transparent, and I, I, you know, I love that in a company. Yes, if you're transparent, um, he's all over. It. Yes, I, I couldn't thank you more for doing what you do. But I mean, they give you their mash bill. They tell you they're they're working with uh, Kelvin Cooperage. You know, they, they give you a little bit of backstory where high gold came from. And then they go, at, you know, low entry proof for more flavor. So they distill it down. Once it comes off the dis, uh, the still, yes. they distill it down to, I think, 115. Okay. And then put it in a barrel. And they believe it brings a little more flavor right. that way. Uh, extreme small batch, never more than 15 barrels harvested. Always toasted and charred, never chill filtered. Nice. So in a world where small batch can literally mean anything. Yep. They're pretty specific as well. I like small that they're matches. saying, "Look, it's we're we're in that fifteen barrel range." I like it, and that's how we're picking it. I like it. So, I mean, the the transparency for me, and it just my research nerd side goes directly toward that. <laughs> you are that. I am. You are the nerd that. portion of this show. I'm just the guy that kind of drinks it and be like, oh, "I think it's good." All right. So, that is high gold. From a Rabbit Hill, Rabbit, Rabbit Hole, Hole Distillery. You're getting confused with your your stuff. I'm gonna let that air for a little bit while I okay. go to the the Cave Hill portion of this. Do you want to crack that one open? I do want to. While crack I clean this one my little glassy glass. I have two glasses. I have I have two more, but I was kind of. We've got a lot on the table. Oh, I know that we do. Okay. So is, is it bad that whiskey makes water taste better? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it could be. So this is the Cave Hill, which we talked about earlier. Yes. The 95 proof. Um, the mash bill on it is 70% corn, 10% malted wheat, 10% malted barley, and 10% honey malted barley. So does that still count as a four grain? I don't know. It says four grain on their website. I was a little... I don't want to say skeptical, but to me, it sounds like you're just you're using three grains because it's barley, well, barley, and barley. I don't know what kind of emojis what those is that? are. What is <laughs> Duff? I'm gonna need you to clear. I think that's honeybees or honey, honey wheat, honey wheat, honey wheat. Maybe I, I, think, I don't, know. I don't know. Clarify that with words, Duff. It looks weird on it our end. It looks funny because it looks like pumpkin, 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 googly eye, googly eye. Maybe Facebook will. No, uh, what is I, that? Oh, it's. Dude with glasses on, I still, you're going to have to clarify. That's got to be the nerd thing. <laughs> oh, that's, gotta that's go what it is. Thing. I'm a nerd. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Nerd alert. Nerd alert. <laughs> what a nerd. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. 
Rose Hill will be available Rose next Hill. Friday at Sunshine Liquor on Needland Avenue. What? Beside the Sonic. It's my disguise because Tiffany is watching me watch you. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany can join in. It's I'm fine. definitely not watching these fellows. So, <laughs> so, Tiff, so actually, Tiffany and I worked together before Tiffany married Duff, and then we all got to hanging out and became yeah. friends, and then they moved away, and now they're back closer in the area. So uh -huh. kudos to them. I need to make a trip over and hang out with the Wrights, not to be confused with Mike Wright and his wife, but can I have your – you certainly you can. Man, that's their cup. All right. Not their cup. So, Cave Hill. Cave Hill. So, four grain whiskey. Well, four grain ish. Four grain bourbon. Oh. Straight bourbon. I got rabbits on the corks. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I found it. Huh. Do I get a free prize? <laughs> we found the rabbit. I found the rabbit. <laughs> There's two of them. What do I win? Is that kind of like finding the. The Indian with the yes, star on, on the, the on the uh, whatever sucker that is. Tootsie roll pop. Yes, the Tootsie roll pop. <laughs> if you find the Indian shooting the star arrow, you get a free one. A couple, a couple. Ca oh, they have a couple cases. Okay. Ooh. That rosewood was good. Didn't know how many bottles he or okay. That rosewood. That was rosewood good. was good. I'm not gonna lie. I, well, <clears> let me rephrase that. I, one of them I liked better than. Yes, the I other. will say that. That was the the one. The other one was the one I got pickles on, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Which was really weird. Don't. I don't know if I want pickle juice as my whiskey flavor. I don't know neither. I don't know if I want pickle flavored whiskey, but the chicks at Longhorn Beaumont tried to sell it to me <laughs> a week ago. <laughs> Does Longhorn have access to Sam Houston 15 year? I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. That would be a Mike Wright question. Um, Maybe their Dallin store. If yeah, because I've noticed Dallin's got stuff that Lumberton doesn't right. have. Like we talked about the Terry Bradshaw. It's in. It's on Dallin Road. Um I don't know if Mike's even watching or not. He was a busy man today. I talked to him earlier oh, really? on the phone. Yeah, he was he was heading to do some kind of interview. Ooh. Yeah. So I like the I like the aroma. It's a little more subtle than the the high gold. Yeah, it's me. hard to get something. It's a little more subtle. I mean, it's not overpoweringly sweet, but you can still get that sweetness on it. It's not as present as what the high gold is, which I think that would be complete opposite since this has the Honey malted barley and the <clears throat> high gold didn't. Yeah. But the high gold also had rye, correct? Yes. Okay. So that kind of, that's where the more pepper comes in. Interesting. Okay. So since I'm on this weird little Debbie kick. Oh, God. What are you thinking now? If you tell me them apple delight no, things, no, no. I'm going to throw you know it those, at you. <clears throat> I don't know what they, are they strawberry? The, a, the roll up thingy. Yes, it's got the pink in the middle. Yes, the straw the strawberry version of the Swiss roll. Yeah, that yeah. one. That's okay. what I smell. That's weird. I don't smell strawberries at all. I don't know if it's it's not really even the strawberry, but it's the it reminds me of that strawberry roll. You eat some weird stuff. I love those things. What are you talking about? Like those are awesome. No, they're probably my favorite little Debbie snack. Really? Yes. Over like the fudge round. Yeah. Over the zebra cake. Yeah, definitely. What? Yeah. Oh, I'm not a fan of the zebra a, cake. Zebra cakes are the best. No, you shut your mouth, Duff. They are the block. Absolutely. No, blocked. we're not blocking Duff. <laughs> Duff agrees with me. We're not blocking anybody. That's what it smells like, the little strawberry roll-up thing. I don't get the strawberry roll thing. I don't get strawberry at all on this one, actually. And I keep looking back at the notes that they sent, and I, I really don't catch Ooh. either. Spearmint gum. That's weird. What is that? Okay. <laughs> Give me something, Chad. <laughs> Taint flowers and no, it ain't that. The, Chevy leather. Oh, the zebra roll. The the, ze the <laughs> zebra roll ones. Yeah, they're pretty good too. Um, Y'all are nuts. So, call me crazy, but I get almost like honey crisp apple. Okay. Like if you put a honey crisp apple through a juicer and added a little bit of like baking spice to it, not cinnamon, not nutmeg, but like a more I don't want to say all spice because that's not it neither. But it's it's very honey. Like you the honey's there. You can pick that up pretty easily. Yeah. I don't get I don't know. 
I don't get <clears throat> I don't get apples. So do you want me to read you what they get? Well, you have it in front of you, but I'll read it. Go ahead and read this out. one out. So the cave hill, uh, the aroma, which is another word for the nose, <laughs> spice, honey, fresh apple. So I'm way off on that one. <laughs> the palate, you, you're a little bit closer on the palate, though, I feel like. Um, creamy flavors of orange, honey, and mint with hints of toasted grain. I feel you're a little closer on the palate. The finish, I don't get it all. I mean, I, I get vanilla it's good. I get more custard than vanilla. I don't get the vanilla on the finish. I get the custard, though. I can see that custard. I get the custard. The the way it feels in your mouth after yes. you swallow custard. Yes. <clears throat> I, I like it. I mean, it, it's good. You know, for a, I'm curious for a for a, a different offering. I, I I like it a lot. Am I, I gonna put, of, Am I gonna put it in my top <clears throat> five? Probably not. Is it gonna make my top ten? Maybe this one more than that one. See, really, I like, the, I like the Cave Hill better. So I get a lot more than the Air Gold. And th- it, this is going to sound super cliche because it's a four grain, but I get a lot more graininess. Like I feel like I can taste the grains in that one, which is kind of weird. But I I really enjoy this one, but we both know I lean toward that sweeter palate. Yeah, you like the sweeter uh, stuff. <clears throat> but I I I really enjoy this one. And see, I'm the complete opposite. I like Black Label or you like Blue Label. But it's okay. That's, that's what makes us different and unique. We, you know, and that's what I mean. That's disagree, what it's all about. You know, you know, we disagree on stuff sometimes. We we prefer things differently, and, and it's all good. I like it. So, what are you looking up, by the way? Well, the high gold said it was aged three years, so I was curious. This one is aged three years as well. Is it? It says on the back, matured. Oh, matured okay. over three years in new chart American oak barrels. Okay. Yeah. And, of course, it's through Kelvin Cooperage, which they're the ones that make all the steel. They're probably one of the top steel producers mm-hmm. in America. I don't know a whole lot about them. I do know they make steel stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Steel stuff. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. It's a Cooperage. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> ah. So, see. once again, shout out, Emily. Shout out, Rabbit Hole. Shout out, Kave Zamanian. Y'all are doing That would be awesome Mr. Things. Zamanian. Mr. Zamanian. Because <clears throat> when you make whiskey like this, you yes. definitely get the Mr. in front of your yes. name. And I like that all of theirs are color and gold. Yes. Like, it, the writing is all gold, but they pick a different color based off of what you I didn't what think about doing. this till you just said it. That Cave Hill label is New Orleans Saints colored. It is. And that, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I love it. Because, uh, like, their Derringer <clears throat> yes. is maroon and gold. Yes. Um, I couldn't tell you the oh look boxer boxer grill That's I don't green know green and gold I've is, seen oh, that one you're right it's it the is hunter it's, green yeah. and gold yeah I've you're seen right that one yep good call on that one I've seen that one uh, so they're all something shout in gold. out to those guys shout out to Emily for sending us oh, yes, some this stuff it was amazing I was amazed when I got it because you know the the, the sat and I'll I'll pull a little I'll pull the curtain back a little bit when you get into this game the podcasting game like what we do. When you request a quote unquote media kit, you think it's going to be like, yeah, this these that bottles. right, the little two hundred mil, yes, um, usually a, a more square bottle, yes. two hundred milliliters, and here's some information, like pamphlets. Here's some information. Yes. Here's what we're doing. Um, here's what we would like you to talk about. Um, but yeah, she I, she literally just said, "Hey, two I'm full size bottles." Here we it never is. expected that. No, I I can't thank you enough. I for me, I'm super excited to have it on our table tonight because yes. I have not tried Rabbit Hole as I haven't of either. Yeah, as of today, um, I have not. And I've I looked at it several I've looked, times, and it's one of those things you look at it and you're like, I just don't know. Yeah, and and for the price, let's let's not beat around the bush. For the price point, it's it's not something a lot. And we talked about it. Yeah, it's a you, you're not breaking bourbon. It's a sixty dollars bottle right. of bourbon. From what I've seen, I think all of their stuff is. Re- Priced in that sixty to almost ninety dollar, yeah. like eighty eight dollar yeah, range. Yeah, it's in the it's in the um, the higher end. But like we talked about last week, mm-hmm. live in your zone. So yeah. this may be a little bit of a stretch for some people, right? But I'm here to tell you, if I go, if once we finish this bottle, I'm not afraid to go and spend oh, no. the, the sixty yeah. bucks I, I need to spend yeah. to get another one of these and put it on my shelf personally. Yes. Um. So take that as you will. 
if you're if you lean on the sweeter side of things and you and you want to try something I, I highly recommend going out and get the high gold yeah if, I would. if you've got more of the earthy palette the cigar smoker in you i think yep. kind of leans and it may pair really well it's actually pretty um, good with this particular one i would love to see and if God forbid if Mr. Zamani's listening or watching, <laughs> I would love to see him do a quote unquote cigar batch because I know there's a lot of companies yeah, that do that. That's kind of the but the I hot love thing right now. I love his take on this cave hill. I mean, to me, this is yes, it's a it's a four grain mash bill. I get it. It's it's balanced. It's easy. It's growing on me. Yeah, it's I, I like I like this one over that one. If I had to pick one, I'm going cave hill. Am I'm I, putting my I'm now, putting my quote unquote. You know, because there's a thing in the industry that I work <laughs> my, in, you sign your name to your work. Right. If I'm signing my name on a choice between these two bottles, I'm signing it on that cave hill. Okay. I'm not. I wouldn't be disappointed to yeah. have that one on my shelf. I promise you yeah. that. No, I, I don't think I'd be disappointed to have either one. But the and, way my palate is, and let's get this out of the way. These bo- these bottles were sent to us for free by Rabbit Hole Distillery. Yes, they were. Our review and our judgment of these whiskeys is n- in no way, shape, or form. Uh, shaped by the fact that we got these bottles for free. No. I am telling you the honest to God truth. If I did not like these bottles, I don't like the Cave Hill nearly as much as the High Gold. Yes. I I will put my name behind the High Gold. Mm-hmm. In no way, shape, or form do I want anybody to think we're doing this because they were sent to us for free. No. Are we reviewing them because they were sent to us? Yes. yes. Are we going to tell you a lie and steer you in the wrong direction? No. I don't believe in that. Mm-mm. And I, I want to go ahead and get that out of the way now as we move into what I believe is going to be more and more media samples I think so, yeah. of this nature. And I want everybody to understand, if you're a whiskey company right now and you see this, or, or if you go back to this one as a reference, <clears throat> just because you send it to us for free or whatever the case may be, don't think for a second I'm going to hold back what I truly believe. I'm going to tell you what I find in it. I'm going to tell you the notes that I find in it. If I think it's too young, if I think it's too oaky, if if I love it, I'm I'm going to tell you the truth. I agree. And we've I done, think we've we, done that before because I mean, there's been let's let's be honest, there's been quote unquote uh, three that I know of yeah. that we weren't big fans of. Right. You know, I just don't want to give the wrong impression to anybody. Right. And you always see it on these review websites at the very very bottom in like italics. <laughs> This bottle was sent to us for free by the da, 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 yeah. da, and our review was not da, da, da. I want to get it out of the way. That's not how we're going to do things because no. we've never done that in anything we do. Nope. We're we're 100% honest with our audience and we're going to continue to be that way. Mm-hmm. Nothing will sway us from doing what we do the way we do it. Nope. That's why we do what we do. When we do what we do. You're in an indifferent tonight. I see it. It's all good. But, yeah, like I said, it, it's – I like both of them. For sure. If you're going to ask me, hey, I need you to pick one. Well, now I'm curious. To, I, I'm. It's the cave hill. I'm tempted to go out and eventually purchase a bottle of the Derringer and the Boxer Grill and do those as kind of a follow-up. Okay. And let's see how those fall in line with these. We could do that. I like that. I like that. That's a good idea. Because the Derringer is the one that uh, I literally, when I was looking at this media kit that we got, yeah, the Derringer is the one that intrigued me the most because it's it's very, and I, I'm going to use this term, and it's probably not going to be a popular term. It's very angel envious, just because of the fact that it's finished in a sherry wine cask, right. and it's the only one out of the four so that <clears throat> is finished in a wine cask. So my. Obviously, Angel's Envy is always going to be uh, up high. Well, yeah, because there's so many but, fond memories with us of Angel's Envy. Yeah. One of my, I guess, standards in the P, the PX Sherry Cask realm uh-huh. is TX PX, PX Sherry Cask. That's finish. a good one, too. It, in my mind, that is a really, really good and well-done whiskey in Sherry Casks. Yes, I, I agree with so, that. So, I would be curious of where that one stands versus the PX Sherry Cask. And maybe that's something we do. Let's because there's a bunch of companies that do like a sherry cask finish. Yes. So maybe one day we get multiple ones on, and we just kind of we kind of work through all of them, mm-hmm. see what see what we find. We but, can do that. You know, just just spitballing ideas. And there is a topic in this. We can do whatever somewhere. the hell we want because guess what? <laughs> At the end of the day, it's our show. It's our show. But 
Angels envy Ra. Oh yeah. We still have Straight not cream. So- yeah, we had we hadn't went down. I, I want the rye, and I've heard it's an amazing winter drink. Yes, that's that's what I keep hearing too. And we're we're running out. Penelope makes a, a <gasps> sherry. Do those Penelope make a sherry cask? Sherry, sherry, sherry. Rose, Tokai. Run through your Penelope brain. <laughs> Toasted you're American the- light. You're the Penelope no. guru on the show. It's, it's a dessert yeah. drink. Okay. I don't think they have a sherry cask, Clint. If I'm, and <clears throat> well, Duff was the one who asked. Oh, Duff. I, I'm yeah, sorry, Duff. I think she, it was. They were all mixed in. Um, no, I don't think Penelope does. And if they did, it was a previous release that I am not 100 percent aware of. You, and you, and please, if you find it, let me know because <laughs> I'll add it to my. Taste the rainbow. Yeah, you got you <laughs> damn near have the whole rainbow. I know. I was so disappointed. I wanted the toasted, and they they didn't have it. No, oh, it was gone. Maybe not. But, anyways, we have a topic. We do have a topic. Y'all got any headlines y'all seen this week? As we as y'all continue to listen to our, us, just. Blah, 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 well, blah, I know. Blah, for, I know. For me, <clears throat> I feel Tom Brady is trying to channel his inner Michael Jordan and retiring again. So. <laughs> Is there any chance he comes back after what was it like forty eight days? Yeah, last time last year. I don't know. Is there man. any I chance feel, he comes back? Like I watched his actual social media thing, the little on the beach. Yeah, Ford is going. In. Oh, I saw that they're coming. Yeah, they're they're getting back into F one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so they're they're diving deeper into the racing game because they're already in NASCAR. Yeah, they're, they're 40s, getting back yeah. into F one. Which is uh, good. Which is good for Ford. Yeah, I like the fact that Ford. It's that's a good thing for Ford. I'm not a quote big unquote, racing um, show. Big yeah. racing show. Well, <laughs> that half. Not even <laughs> that half uh, is a big <clears throat> racing show. This half. So honestly he was, does not watch NASCAR to save his life. <laughs> but interesting. Whoa. Okay, be, that's an interesting take. He thinks, he thinks he'll be back. So, like I was saying. Last year, I think it was 48 days he yeah. retired. He did, like, the big retirement thing. Yes. It was the S, you know, the big long speech, yes. this, that, and the other. Yes. Well, this year, he even admitted, look, I, only, I, got, one ch- I got one shot at it, and yep. I came back. This is my retirement. Yep. And he was just sitting on a beach, just chilling. He seemed genuine and emotional. Yeah. To me, at least. Does it stick? Or does Josh McDaniel say, ring, 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 Tom? Bro, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and what, refresh my. He's in Vegas. He right is. Now. In, he is the head okay, coach of, he's head, of Vegas. He's in Vegas. Yes. Okay. I don't. As, I don't know, man. I mean, part of me, part of me, honestly, as much as I despise Tom Brady, part of me wanted to see him go out the way Peyton Manning went out, winning the Super Bowl, go out on top, that kind of stuff. Because let's be honest, Tampa was a dumpster. Oh, no, they this were year. huge. Dump. I don't. I'm surprised. I mean, they, they were, were eight and nine. They were literally. And almost looked, the worst dumpster looked. fire in the NFC South had it not been for my damn Saints. And that was the problem was that entire NFC South was a dumpster fire. Yes. They made the playoffs at eight and nine. Yes. I mean, yes. come on now. No, I get it's it. It's not very often that it happens. Say no chance, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I, I mean, I feel. I do, so what I don't want is for this to turn into a Brett Favre situation. Yes. I'm retiring. I'm coming back. Yes. I'm retiring. I'm coming, I'm coming back. back. I'm retiring. I'm coming back. Oh, the Jets want to sign me? I'm going to come back again. Yes. I mean, come on. Which, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody else saw it like I saw it or not, but his his broadcasting deal, if he takes it. He's going to make more stupid money. Stupid amount of money. More they, money than he did in his, down. Yes. in his, his entire 23 career. year career, dude made $333 million. His broadcasting contract, and I don't remember who it's with. Fox. Okay, it's with Fox. His broadcasting contract is 10 years, $373 million over 10 years. Nuts. Yes. Nuts. Balling. Yes. Yes, for real. Yes. But here's here's the concern. America loves Greg Olson in the booth. Yes, they do. Greg Olson killed it this year. Yes, he did. What do you do? How do you bump Greg Olson, who's America's sweetheart right now? I don't know if you do. 
You have to. You're paying Tom Brady $375 Why million. Why can't they bump the other guy that's with Greg Olson? So, because of the way they do broadcast booths uh-huh. is a analyst uh-huh. and a color commentator, okay. which is typically a former player. Okay. So, you don't bump the analyst, okay. the, the broadcaster. Okay. He's got a broadcasting background. That's, that's the news anchor guy. Okay. And then you have a former player or color commentator on the other side of him, which right now is Greg Olson, but next year it's got to be Tom Brady. <laughs> I had to stop. Her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Th- so I'm curious because she because it's been noted several times she makes way more money than he does. Oh, I have no idea what she, she makes. makes. Stupid money. Like he makes dumb money, but she makes just ridiculously stupid money. So <clears throat> is she? Con- is she still working? I would guess. I mean, and I'm not going to try to say the name because I can't. Giselle Bunchik. Them. Yeah. Yep, that one. Butt chick. Hmm. Whatever. Boom chick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Again, butt chick. Okay. I don't really know. So, I don't... Is she retired, too? I don't think so, because, I mean, let's be honest. She's still good looking. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's still a good looking woman. So, I don't know if she is or isn't, but... And I know how does it... What, how does... So, now that... And especially now that he's retired, how does this whole child custody thing work? Oh, I'm sure they go to joint custody at that point. I mean, you think they just split it 50-50? Who's going to tell Tom Brady no he can't see his kids? Come on. I mean, but I mean Tom it, Brady's not week? deadbeat Joe on the corner. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and does he have to stay close enough to where they can go to the same school? Or are they homeschooled? She was a stay-at-home. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so she's not working. Okay. But I feel she made enough while she was working that – and I'm assuming they're in, like, private school, home tutor. Oh, I'm sure they're... St- so, yeah. does it matter where Tom Brady lives? Because in some divorce paperwork or child custody... You have to be so many miles. Right, you have to live within yes. 25 miles or the same school district yes. or whatever. Does it really matter? Can they just... I mean, he'll just fly the home I private feel tutor Tom person Bra- I feel with Tom Brady literally could just pack up and move to wherever they are. I mean, if they're in Boston, I feel Brady would move back to Boston. That's such a weird conversation because you don't think – It's very weird because – For us, it's like that's a serious conversation. Yes. But for somebody like that, is it – does it really freaking matter? Well, I mean, like like take my parents, for example. Okay, when my parents divorced, they only lived seven miles apart. My mom moved to Silsby and my dad lived in Evadale. Right. Wasn't that big of a deal. Right. But for that, I don't don't know because that's just – Like, I don't know their children's situation, obviously. I don't either either by far. But – I mean, it's just – that's just kind of one of those things, like, how does that work? <laughs> exactly. I don't know how to answer that question. So, I don't know how But I works. would be curious of what happens, like, after the Super Bowl, after the draft, does Tom Brady – especially now that he's divorced. He's a single dude. He's going to be stuck at home in a, in a house. You really think so? I don't think even if, even is, if say let's say devil's advocate and he tells Fox, "Hey, stuff it, I'm not doing it." Dude is literally like the world's most eligible bachelor, and I'm not saying the U.S. <laughs> most eligible bachelor. I'm the saying the most. world's <laughs> most eligible bachelor right now. I mean, dude's I it, got millions. I'm just curious if Fo- if the analyst or color commentator role. Feels that itch that Tom Brady has. There's would, a reason he's played for 23. I would almost years. love to see Fox break the norm and put two color commentators. So together. do a three man booth or go three man booth. Yeah, have Brady on one side, the the other dude in the middle that nobody knows his damn name, I and Greg eat. Olson, Ian Burkhalter, whoever. They're doing the Super Bowl this year. Fox is yeah. So I'm curious of how because if Olson kills it. In the Super Bowl. Yeah, what you know he's going to. I mean, come on. How do you bump that dude from your number one game role? I don't know. I don't you, know that you can. I don't know if you bump him or I if I don't you, know that you can. Because here's the thing. If you bump him, you know damn good and well somebody else who does. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. She was getting a little little uh, trouser snake. <laughs> <laughs> she had a side pet. <laughs> it's a trouser snake. As long as it that did, didn't live in the house. As long as it didn't shit on her pillow, it's fine. Or his pillow. You want some tube steak? <laughs> God. <laughs> Hold uh, on. I'm not going to do this. I want to do one of these blends. Tri- trips three wide broadcast. I love that one. <laughs> yeah. Three hey, wide. See? Trips three trips. wide. All right. So this one. Trips three wide. YZ banana. Yeah. Spider. 
Spider Whatever. Monkey. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how John Gruden did this shit. So this one is the half. Knocking down his security fence. <laughs> what? <laughs> He'll have so much attention knocking down his security yeah, fence. Yeah, that ain't no joke. Dude. So this is the whistle pig, the squill, 13 year. Uh, and the half Isaac Bowman port finish. I've never had Isaac Bowman anything. I haven't either. I've had I've heard Whistle Pig. Good things about it. Let me finish this and do a rinse. Yeah. Are you gonna try this one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, that's bubble gum, like double bubble pink. What the cornbread hail? Pink ass bubble gum. You and your damn flavors. Pink ass bubble gum. Bubble gum. Like, oh, I don't want to hear like it. Double bubble BMW or that M5 leather. That one, first of all, it's not M5. Taint flowers. <laughs> well, taint flowers was. Taint flowers was a damn funny old Kurt. What? Damn, damn old Kurt. 129 for okay. Old Kirk. So the mailing address, if you want to send samples, <laughs> is 1125 What's Roosevelt a, Drive. I, I want some. Well, I want a little bit of backstory on the old, what is Sillsby, Texas, old with Kirk. a zip code of seven seven six five six. Or if, <laughs> if you know Jeremy Smith, he's got the address. So, Clint, I'm just coming over. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right. Good lord. So, so this is the that's that says sequel. The squill. That looks like it says sequel. It's pig. It's Whistle Pig, the squill. It makes sense. Oh, my God. Oh, getting off a little bit of the sports thing. Tastes like Will It Oh, okay, Will It Rye, but on steroids. Ooh. Don't we have Will It? Isn't that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Family Reserve. <laughs> Family Reserve. <laughs> uh, just real quick, non-sports note. Okay. Punxsutawney Phil saw a shadow. Six more weeks of winter. Who cares? <laughs> it's a fucking groundhog. We have Nobody been. Gives a shit. It's a fucking rat. Do an episode at his house. We're gonna Don't tempt me with a good time. We're going to need a DD for that one. That's a that's a pretty good little haul from what I hear. Don't tempt me with a good time. I know, right? I ain't here for. We'll we'll figure the logistics out on that. Yeah, hit us up. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll figure out the logistics. Is there a hotel nearby? I'm assuming that would be a wild turkey episode. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's a man after my own heart. I cut my teeth on Turkey 101. I'm I'm never going to stop making wild turkey dusty jokes with, no, with Clint. No, the Clint's got the the Clint is the 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 dusty turkey hunter. So, oh, we can we can crash at his place. We don't even have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, on. it's a sleepover. It's a sleepover <laughs> with microphones and and headphones and cameras. Yeah, we're not braiding each other's hair. We're wearing headphones. <laughs> It'll uh, be a whatever we want. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I love it. You are just nuts. I'm just South of Con- Yes. Yes. Yes, for sure. Sponsor. Yeah, we got invites all over. We're going to Con- We're going, we're to, going South to Conroe. <laughs> we're, we're Mid County. We're going Conroe. to Mid County. I was in Conroe today. <laughs> Where else are we going? <laughs> we're going all over the place. I hear we're going to Louisiana at some point. Who knows? Yeah, we're everywhere. So you got no. No comment on the rat that sees a shadow. And no, I could care less. I mean, it, the Cajuns do it is with there, the alligator. So I is mean, there any science or no or no not science proof behind the whole six more weeks? Like, can did somebody go back in time and track it? Well, here here's my thing with it. Okay, first of all, Phil lives in Pennsylvania. Yes, I think this is Texas. Okay, our winters are different. We've had none but rain. Yes. Oh, <clears throat> real quick, since we're talking. Gentlemen of the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> we're, going, we're worldwide. Worldwide. Maybe, maybe we'll end up in Dubai and Vietnam, too, while we're at it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Get your, get your passport ready. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to, real quick, since we're talking about Groundhog's Day, I was going to wear my J's, but I wore black and red instead. Just, uh, I don't get it. Jordan's. Okay. Today's Jordan Day. Jordan Day? Two, three, twenty-three. Well, I know yesterday was Chris Kyle Day, so I guess you and I have different celebrations of days. Well, I knew it was Chris Kyle Day, <laughs> but it's twenty-three, twenty-three. Oh, the God. date two, three, two, three. Nobody cares about Jordan. So I wore black and red in honor of Jordan. Jordan and his days with the Bulls. I was gonna wear my Jays, but your yard is so damn muddy. I can't help it. It's raining. I know. For it's a literally raining. It, yeah, I know. 
I didn't want to get You act like I can control <laughs> the weather. I can do a lot of things, my friend, but control the weather is not one of them. Are you sure? I hope. Because if I can control the weather, I damn sure don't need to be doing what I'm doing for work. No joke. Um, let's see. But, yes, yesterday was Chris Kyle Day, just yes, case you curious. it was. R.I.P. Chris Kyle. Yes. Dude was a legend. Yes. The devil of Ramadi himself. Last, last note on Tom Brady, and then we can move on. Okay. Is he going to be... The is he going to go down as the greatest quarterback of all time? And will he be the greatest fifth round or later quarterback ever? <laughs> He's in an incubus concert. I love it. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in an incubus what? concert and overpaid for 12 year old whistle pick. <laughs> I didn't even realize Incubus was still touring. That is awesome. Ooh, I'm a, I'm yeah. actually a big like, Incubus fan. <laughs> are they the ones that do uh... that like side note something a uh, a fun fact that nobody knows about oh, Bucky? God, huge Incubus fan. Really? Yes. Don't they do Pardon Me? Yeah. Okay, that was real big when I was in my freshman year of college. Yeah, but yeah. huge. Actually, Gotta catch up tomorrow. Hey. Yes, we're, please. We're starting, it. We're got, starting your samples hey, know, right now. We're, we're doing only on for a short time, but we've yes. got your samples. And this is the blend for the week. The pig is over here. The pig. The Rock Hill's here. And the widow. And the widow. We're getting into the widow next. We're on the yes. pig right now. Catch us, catch us tomorrow. So he was the 199th pick. Sixth round, I think, of the 2000 draft. Okay. Not just quarterback, but we, will he go down as the greatest fifth rounder later Player ever. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be this is gonna be weird, and it's way early, but it depends on what kind of career Brock Purdy has. Whoa, <laughs> because Mr. If, irrelevant. Because if Brock Purdy can go on and do has something. a career like Tom Brady, I feel that dude will go down as the greatest player well, ever. Does he even have to have a career like Tom Brady? Because he was Mr. Irrelevant. Well, I mean. I feel it's got to be at least newsworthy, and I feel just because like, Brady has what seven Super Bowl rings. That sounds about right, six or seven. So if for whatever reason he co- Brock Purdy comes back from this Tommy John surgery and does end up going on to be the Forty ers quarterback of the future, let's just say three Super Bowls as Mister Irrelevant, maybe an MVP somewhere. I feel in that there. puts him in the same breath as Tom Brady. I feel he's going to have to win at least f- bare minimum of four <laughs> Super Bowls and two MVPs to be better. So does Patrick Mahomes have a better chance of going down as the GOAT? Patrick Mahomes needs a haircut, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, I'm okay. not a big fan of the hair. So now that Tom Brady's retired, hopefully for good, um, would you pick Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow as the next GOAT? Somebody that can overtake Tom Brady. Patrick Mahomes or Joe Burrow? Is that your answer? <laughs> Without saying a word, my friend. The Burrow. Without saying a word, that Bur- is my answer. Burrow. I was so pulling for him, and I feel the NFL's rigged. Oh, here we go. Yep. See, and that theory. leaves me. Conspiracy theory in a nut hole. So, the since you NFL brought it up, NFL is rigged because that third and Hashtag- nine play where they <laughs> said it wasn't, it didn't even count, and then they brought it back, and they ended up getting like a touchdown out of it. So, hashtag NFL rigged was trending this week. I'm sure it is. On Twitter. Yeah. Are you a, are you a conspiracy theorist I feel they screwed. in that realm? I feel they screwed Joey B. So the NFL personally screwed Joey B. Are you a season long? Do you believe the NFL is truly rigged season long? Or is it a once you make the playoffs, let's get the best storyline? I feel it's once you make the playoffs, best storyline, honestly. Because it does make a lot of sense. It's the Eagles, Andy Reid's former team. Um, I think Sirianni coached with Andy Reid at one point. I think he falls under that Andy Reid tree, yes. Uh, Correct. The Kelsey brothers are playing against each other. That is true. So... NFL is rigged or no? I think so, and I'll go back to something before any of this. You remember the Saints-Rams game with the blatant pass interference? Like blatant, blatant, like Ray Ray Charles could have made that call blatant? I feel the NFL's been rigged for years, especially in the playoffs. Interesting. 
I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I so. feel it's rigged. I think there's too many people involved for it to be rigged. No, I don't. You can't trust that many human beings with that much responsibility and think mm, 100% of them are capable enough to pull it off. You're giving a lot of credit to a lot of people that human beings are that intelligent. All you need is five. Why? How many officials are on the officiating crew? But it can't just be the officials. How many guys does it take to do the replay? One. It just it can't just be the officials so that are in on it. So four officials and one guy makes five, my friend. It can't just be the officials that are in on it. It takes more than that. I feel like it was, though. I mean, you saw, you saw <laughs> the same game that I saw. I did. Did I think that third down call was bullshit? Do I think they should have replayed it? No. No, but there was a, a ref on the grassy knoll, just in case we was curious. <laughs> and a rye willet barrel. <laughs> I'm about to open a fresh... Black, uh, black, black and black and rye, black and rye. Okay, I got it. Is that the one they did in collect, or is that just the regular black and rye? What's the one they did with the uh, dad gummit? So Metallica was the actual blackened, blackened. The next one, Dave Pickerel. Is it, did they do one, Dave Pickerel? Who? They're about to do one with Lincoln. Lincoln Henderson. Are they? Which, if you know your history, Lincoln Henderson was one of the guys that got Angel's Envy off the ground. Right. So. I know they just did one. Black and Rye from a Willet Bird. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I knew they done. They had done something with the uh, multiple. They've done. They've done several collaborations. <sighs> so do. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how to go on with this NFL rigged. Conversation. I just feel it is, man. There's been too much stuff over the years. It's a body of work. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Then why hasn't the Cowboys, America's team, won because the Super Bowl? Because they're not America's team, first of all. Do you really think Jerry Jones, who has a whole hell of a lot more pull in the NFL than you probably think, you really think he's okay with not winning one since, what, 96? I feel Jerry Jones pisses people off on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he hadn't won one since 96. You're his, done fucked his, up. You need to retire, bro. His quarterback's garbage. <laughs> let's be honest. Dak Prescott, even though it's a feel-good story from the kid from Mississippi State, I get it. Dak's garbage. I'm not a Cowboys fan, so I'm don't not not, nobody take this the wrong Which way. I'm not I, a Cowboys say, fan. I can't say nothing about quarterbacks. Is I think all three on our roster are yeah, garbage yeah. right now. One of them, I, I hear, need is, to rethink that strategy. It might be the most valued franchise in the world. Oh, but for at the sure. Same time. So if it's rigged, why wouldn't you want the Cowboys in the Super Bowl at least every five years? If it's rigged, I just feel it's a I feel it's a dynasty thing, and I feel right now the Chiefs are the new dynasty. I mean, think about it. Was that five straight AFC championships? Exactly. The Chiefs are the new Buffalo Bills without making it to the Super Bowl. So my argument for it being rigged is the Bengals were so far behind in money and sponsorship Mm -hmm. and all of that that the NFL had to force them into the playoffs and into the Super Bowl for them to catch up. Because now they have an indoor practice facility. Now they're getting sponsorships. Joey Joe Burrow is probably about to become one of the highest, if not the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. They had to force that fame and fortune onto the Bengals franchise as a whole. Mm. I don't know. That would be my argument for it being somewhat rigged. Because they cannot continue... And they cannot re-sign Joe Burrow. They cannot re-sign Joe Mixon. They cannot re-sign all of these players. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. They're not going to be able to re-sign those players if they're, they continue to be the small market team that they are. So last year, putting them in the Super Bowl, putting them back into the success that they've had, you're going to have to continue that to allow it to – progress the way you need it to. I don't know if I agree with that or not. Otherwise, you, Cincinnati goes into irrelevance. Because you, you you almost have to think of it as you're building a culture, okay? I feel now players are going to want to go play with Joe Burrow. 
So you've got that culture in place where they're like, I want to go play with this guy. Kind of like when, Le- you know, God forbid, when, when LeBron went to Miami, yeah, Miami but, was kind of, eh. But if, But if they don't make it as far as they have the last two years, they don't have the means to re-sign Joe Burrow to the contract that he is going to demand. Joe Burrow leaves. I don't know. I mean, I sure as hell would. Cincinnati is a small market compared to the Cowboys, to L.A., to New York, to name the team. I don't think Joe's that guy, though. Joe's an Ohio kid. It's been well documented. He is an Ohio kid. When somebody puts... Deshaun Watson, for example, somebody puts two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed in front of you. I don't give a fuck where you're from. You're going to take that money. Yeah, and look where it, look where it got him. Because Atlanta was the front runner, and which was a whole hell of a lot closer for Deshaun Watson. It was to home. Yeah. Than Cleveland, but whenever Cleveland comes in with two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed, no questions asked. Look where he ended up. Yeah, and look what it's cost Cleveland, too. Cleveland, I'm telling you right now, if Watson doesn't turn around the first six weeks of next season, you there's going to be a bunch questions. of second-guessing going on in Cleveland. Well, yeah, they they screwed the entire quarterback market. Oh, yeah, they did. Like, owners are probably pissed yeah. at the Haslams. Yeah. They, I think it's the Haslams. Yeah, they screwed Cleveland. the entire market. Oh, yeah. Because how as Cincinnati, as the not most cash-heavy ownership team, how do they go? How do you, how do you re-sign Burrow and say, look, I can't give you two hundred thirty million dollars guaranteed. I'll give you ten years, five hundred million dollars, and let's pray to God we can move some of that money down the road. I could see that because that's kind of sort of what Kansas City did with Patrick Mahomes. Here's ten years, four hundred fifty million dollars. I think it was that's ten years, four fifty. And it's very back end loaded because the cap and the salary cap or whatever is going to go up. Yes, it's and going we up. know that yes. in the next ten years it's going to be outrageous. Oh, it's good. Yeah, so it's going up already. We push that money to the back end, and Patrick Mahomes signs a team friendly deal. It looks cool on paper, dude. Almost got half a billion dollars, but in reality, that's not the contract he signed. He gets it's back end loaded. It was probably signing bonus loaded. There's a lot of if ands and buts there, and I don't feel like Cincinnati can do that. No, but I but here's my here's my caveat to that. Does Cincinnati need to do that? Because is Joe number one is Joe Burrow that type of guy? Right. We don't know the answer to that. We don't. We have no clue. Joe Burrow could be like some of the previous quarterbacks before him. Hey, I'll take less money, so where you can get better players around me. Tom Brady. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I Tom Brady should have made a shit ton more money. Oh, he, he should have made way more than 333 I'm step out. over, <laughs> you know, what, 23 years was it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he should have made way more money. But at the same time, it's do you do you value culture? It's like the, the whole work-life balance thing to me. Do you value making a crap ton of money and not seeing your wife and kids? Or do you value seeing your wife and kids and make average money? It's kind of where it's at for me, at least on my viewpoint. And like I said, that's completely my viewpoint. It wouldn't be the first time somebody's called me a crazy asshole today. So, you know, my mic, my show, my electricity, I get it. But at the same time, there's other things that kind of factor into it. I mean, we know Joe's going to get some big sponsorship deals. We oh, know yeah. that. There, I'm sure there's sure. cigar companies out there right now that are chomping at the bit to put in <clears throat> Yeah, in some of their things, and, and let's be For honest, sure. some of those dudes are loaded. So, kind of, kind of moving forward. Okay. Do you think D'Amico Ryan's is the right hire in Houston? I don't know. I'll be completely honest. I'm surprised anybody. I'm took always that job. leery about. <laughs> let's be honest. I'm surprised anybody took the job. The thing that makes me the leeriest about it is the fact that D'Amico played for Houston. I mean, they called him Cap because he was he was one of their captains. Yeah. During that whole process. Oh, I'm glad somebody doesn't think I'm crazy. I mean, I get called a lot of things. I would be show, worried. So. I would be worried for the sheer fact that they went through two coaches in two years. 
if du- let's just say because that team is young, doesn't have the talent, doesn't have it's going to have a rookie quarterback if they take a quarterback at two. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm glad we're on the same page. Not unblocked. <laughs> yeah. Cra- crazy no. Uh, yes. But let's just say the Texans go three and thirteen. Or whatever it is, I don't remember now. Three. Let's just say three and thirteen in D'Amico's first year. Okay. It's a rookie quarterback. It's a not very talented team. It's a young team. Is it a rookie quarterback is- though? Because I have a little conspiracy on it. Oh boy. Here's my conspiracy. Okay, Let's think about this. Glasses. So, D'Amico's previous gig, he was in San Francisco, right? Correct. San Francisco has a quarterback quandary on their hand. <laughs> Do you keep Jimmy Garofalo? No. And let. Trey Lance walk? No. Or do you well, keep you Trey Lance? You can't let Trey Lance walk. He's under rookie contract. I understand that, but can you can you force a quote unquote trade for Trey? You Lance? can trade Trey Lance to somebody. Okay. And that's your only way out. Because he's let's under be contract honest, for four years, Brock Purdy has quote unquote changed the the mindset there in San Francisco. Garoppolo's out. You think he's gone? Okay. Garoppolo's out. Does, Take him out of the equation. Does D'Amico try to go after Garoppolo because of the familiarity? Possibly. Okay. There's a possibility there. Okay. I could I could get they down. They try so I could get down with here's that. Here's the bit. here's the part here's part of that though. They tried that. They tried and it failed. They thought Davis Mills might be the answer. Yeah. And he was not. They switched quarterbacks. A little over halfway through the year, mm-hmm. that didn't work. Let's go back to Davis Mills. Let's load up on talent. Oh, God. don't even get don't me started even, on that. No. I'm a UT guy. Don't even get me started on that one. I don't. But you, there's no. So here's the problem with that. There's I, no guarantee there. What if What if Bryce Young or CJ Stroud are the next two great things? I agree. Yeah, I mean, you can't argue that. Tex, and the Texans what if have you an miss, opportunity to get one of them. What if you miss one of those guys? What if Caleb Williams is the next hottest thing? Mm-hmm. What if – I mean, you can play the what-if game all day long. How yes, much How much talent can you load up on the defensive side or the offensive side of the ball before you're like, Davis Mills is just going to continue to suck and we can't do nothing? Because look at all the teams that made the Super Bowl. Yeah. Name the – well – other than like the Philadelphia Eagles who made it with uh, Nick Foles, oh, after no, there's, there's been other ones before Carson that. Wentz. Back history, because I mean, have there been a whole lot of them? Brad though? Johnson and the Tampa Bay Bucks, the year they won it, that defense was stout. Okay, so yeah, that you, was a Warren Sapp led defense that was stout. It was one of the Dilfer brothers, Rich, Trent or Trent Dilfer when he was Trent, in Baltimore. Was it Trent? That defense was stout. Okay, too. so there's some. And then you go back to examples. quote unquote Rich Gannon with the Raiders. But Rich, that was a different time. They were all different times. But you're talking about completely different times in an NFL that is 150 percent offensive based. True, but the old the over under in this year's Super Bowl is like 49 and a half. The old adage still rings true, though, my friend. Does it? Offense wins games. Defense wins championships. Does it? I feel it does. Because both of these are high-powered offense. Jalen Hurts is a high-powered offensive quarterback. Okay, prime example. Last year's Super Bowl. Rams-Bengals, right? hmm Rams came in with that defense. hmm That defense prevailed. Did it, though? I feel it did. Because that offensive, that offensive line for the Bengals was terrible all year. That's Joe true. Burrow was one of the most sacked quarterbacks of all time last year. That is very year. true. But at so, the same time... Was it... Rex Grossman and the Bears in 06. Okay, I mean, yes, you're talking. One. I mean, yeah, you were talking 20 years ago, but yeah, I mean, there's there's another one. You know, Nick Foles. Prime example. That defense Which was some of that one. Pretty good. I mean, let's be honest. The year that the Eli and the Giants beat damn Tom Brady. You can't tell me that I offense was setting the world know. on fire. But Eli showed up in big games. Eli has a terrible regular season record. But when they make the playoffs, Eli shows up. I get it, and I understand that. But but my my thing is what got them there. It wasn't that offense. Well, no, it was that defense. It was Strahan. It was whoever else right. was on that defense. I, I just, was, You see where I'm going with this. 
I do. I feel but like I'm, I'm Shannon Sharp almost sitting here trying to explain myself to Skip Bayless. You're not, because I understand. I do understand. I'm not Skip Bayless. <laughs> Trust you, me. Thank God. I won't be Skip Bayless on this one. <laughs> because I do understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, you have to have that cornerstone, that centerpiece. You do. And I don't think you can win in today's NFL without it. But does that centerpiece always have to be a quarterback? Maybe. I mean, so let's use that example. Okay. The Indianapolis Colts. Okay. They should have been a powerhouse. You get a steady, older veteran quarterback in Matt Ryan. But you've got a workhorse, a dog at the running back position Mm -hmm. in Jonathan Taylor. Yep. That could be your centerpiece. Could be. But it's not. No. And it's not enough. I, I and granted, it. he got hurt this year. Yeah. There was some time, there some games he missed. But it didn't work last year either. Well, I mean, let's let's be honest. Philadelphia is one Jalen Hurts injury away from being shit. Jalen Hurts gets a season-ending um, injury? Are we even talking about Philadelphia in the playoffs, in the Super Bowl? Probably not because they lost. They lost every game he wasn't in. Right. I mean, they did, but they, Philly did it before. They did, but I mean, let's be honest. That staff. Because Carson now, Wentz got hurt. And who's what? taking Derek Carr? I, I'm confused. So, does it make sense for him to come to Houston? I don't think he goes to Houston. I don't know. I know the the big one that I've seen for some god weird ass reason I don't know. A lot of people have him going to New Orleans. That would make sense. It makes sense because he doesn't have to be the guy. But you have two Well, there is a tie receivers. there. David Carr. Okay. The original Houston Texans quarterback. Okay. His brother played for Houston. The but, original Houston Texans quarterback. Oh god. You put veteran leadership on that team yeah, with a bunch of young players. You build around that and plan, kind of like he was saying, yeah, just don't get sacked 157 times in a season. Um, but put a veteran quarterback back there, build some talent around that guy with wide receivers, running backs, a defensive side of the ball because D'Amico is a defensive guy. And then two, three, four years from now, you – have either groomed a young quarterback or you draft your young quarterback to move on from Derek Carr. Okay. And you're set. Why? That's not, that's actually not, I can talk myself into that idea. I, I, I don't, th- I don't think Derek Carr is the answer in Houston. I don't know who is, but I mean, to me, there's, there's other options that I would take before Derek Carr. Okay. So the Houston Texans have the number two pick in the draft. Are you taking Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud at that pick? Is that a guaranteed pick? That's number two overall. Is that is is either one of those guys guaranteed? They're both smaller. I don't. I don't. C.J. Think Stroud's not a scram. Or yeah, I don't. C.J. Stroud's not a scrambler. He's a pocket quarterback. Yeah. Bryce Young has got some scramble ability. He played for Alabama. That's a winning program. I don't think you take either. I I, I literally am going to be the unpopular side of this. I don't think you take either one. Or do you go defensive side of the ball I and you continue to build something? D'Amico's a defensive guy, so if D'Amico's going to have any input in it, he's going to go defense. Everybody knows that. Because I And I can't remember. And plus, my thing, here's my other thing with that. The If you take one of those guys and they're a complete second coming of Ryan you're your, Leaf. You're putting your franchise back a minimum of four years and not only that you can go out and let's be honest you could probably go out and get and i i hate my saints for mishandling this you can get a Jameis winston and bring him into houston you can go out and possibly get a jimmy garoppolo because san francisco there's is a little be bit of a shopping tie there. jimmy garoppolo Derek Carr is obviously out in Vegas. There's another thing you bring in. I don't think if you're the Texans and you're on the clock, you necessarily have to take I can't remember, one of those two quarterbacks. I can't remember who it is. So there's the defensive tackle out of Georgia, and then there was another defensive player that were like pretty much the consensus. When the Bears had the number two pick, 
and then all of a sudden Texas just the Texans decided to win their last game for some ungodly reason, and they moved into the number two pick. Yep. But when the Bears were the the thought to be number two, there were two different defensive guys, one out of Georgia, and I can't remember the other guy. Um, but so could those two guys be the one and two? Because I think Chicago is all in on the Georgia. Tackle. I think there are two from what I've read. So does D'Amico Ryans and the Texans take that other guy? And I, I'm sorry, I can't think of his name. Hang on a second, I'm fixing that. Um, and then you, oh, but but then you open up the door for your competition to take C.J. Stroud. Take. Uh, so who Bryce has the Young. number three pick? Ta- I nobody cares. <laughs> That's a dumb pick. Who cares? But you know what I mean. Like, do you allow your competition? to take on the C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young or Will Levis, who's believed to be the top quarterback pros- pro- prospect. I mean, at what point do you say, I have to take a chance on a potential superstar quarterback? Is this the year? Or do you look ahead and say, okay, these guys are coming out in 2024 and hope to God you get a Caleb Williams or... So, if you go off of, and I just pulled this up because it was the only one I didn't have to pay to pull up. If you go off of Yahoo Sports' 2023 mock draft, Mm -hmm. it has the Texans taking C.J. Stroud. Right. Right. Of course. Do I do that? I don't think so. But do you only not do that if you can sign a Derek Carr? What if you miss out? What if Derek Carr goes to the Colts? I feel there. I, and Jimmy Garoppolo goes to the Commanders. I don't. And first of all, I don't feel that you're, you're thinking about the Colts. Who'd you say was going with the Colts? Derek J- Carr? Der- Derek Carr, just for funsies. I don't feel that's going to be the case. Or Jimmy Garoppolo. Who cares I, I don't who feel it that's is? that's going to be the case neither because the Colts are very, very high on Bryce Young. And they Super, have the. They have the number four pick. Behind okay. Arizona, so, so do you your first allow? Four is so do you Cleveland, allow Houston, Arizona, and Indianapolis? Okay, so do you allow as the Texans? Do you allow Indianapolis to have their pick of the litter of C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young? I don't. I don't. I can't answer that number one because I'm not in their world. Without room. taking one, you give them the pick of the litter. Those are the the quarterback darlings of this year. Yeah, but, I mean, let's be honest. We've seen quarterback darlings before that have come out that have been garbage. But you don't know that until it happens. Nobody knows that, exactly. You're exactly right. Nobody knows that. I just – I've never been – Well, Jerry – so, we're talking about quarterbacks. We're talking about that's the centerpiece, right? Yeah. Jerry Jones came out and said if it was up to him and had he – in hindsight, going back to – I don't remember how long ago he said. He said, I'd have taken a quarterback every single draft, and I'm going to do that moving forward. He said, I'm going to take a quarterback early every draft, no matter what. It's that big of a deal. Well, I mean, he I feel he, if anybody needs to do that, it's him. <laughs> but, I mean, it's that big of a deal. I, I get it. it and is, it doesn't matter who your quarterback is. No, because if that's the case, you and I could do it, and I know neither one of us can do it. So don't tell me it doesn't matter who your quarterback is. But it, apparently it doesn't, according to Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is a fucking idiot, too. Yeah, I mean, he's 97 years old yeah, and is a, an idiot with a lot of money. <laughs> but, I mean, in, in the case of Kyler Murray, they can't sign, They can't find a fucking coach. And is that because of Kyler Murray? I think so, because to me, that dude's a I, diva. To me, if I'm Arizona, I don't take and Kyler And I love Murray. Kyler Murray because he played Kyler for Oklahoma. So far, he was a beast in Oklahoma. So far, you're one out of three because no, Baker Mayfield. No. I Baker, know your main crush. Baker Mayfield's Baker garbage was, right no, now. No, okay, Let's be no, he was okay for the Rams. Baker's garbage. Jalen Hurts is in the in the Super Bowl, okay. and I'll, I let me be the first to say Oklahoma has every right to claim Jalen Hurts as Alabama does. <laughs> I can't argue that one. I can try, but I can't argue. So that one. I'm gonna go and put that out there. I can't argue that one at all. Here, do something with that. <laughs> Jesus. But we're talking Oklahoma football. Yeah, we are. I mean, all y'all have to look forward to is Arch Manning and pray to God that dude is somewhat okay. I don't even – I don't know, dude. <laughs> the whole Arch Manning thing scares me because I've said it before on the show. If Arch Manning has What if any, he sucks? What if he has any other last name? Uh, yeah, exactly. What if that is Arch Smith? 
I don't feel he's as recruited. I literally don't. I don't feel he gets near the rub that he gets. And I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm a Texas guy. I mean, that's, <laughs> I know. That's the and that's thing what with it, me. That's what I, brings it up. Is I, you're, a, you're a UT fan. I'm a UT fan. If that is Arch Blankenship, is I, he I, as recruited as Frank Manning? I, I don't feel he is. I'll be honest. I don't feel he is. <laughs> I mean, have you ever watched film of the dude? Ish. Not really. But. I mean, he's a he's your prototypical pocket passer. He's got a little bit more mobility than his uncles. But he's basically the same guy. He He's a souped-up version of Eli. Yeah. That's what I feel about him. Does he have the IQ as Peyton? God, I hope so. Because if he's got Eli's IQ and a little bit more wheels, <laughs> I think UT's in trouble, my friend. I'm not going to lie to you one bit. UT is in trouble. I just I don't know. I hope he's great. Like, I love Peyton. Oh, he's going to put asses in Peyton's seats, no funny. doubt. He's, Peyton's funny. He's got, he does great content. He was an amazing quarterback. He's going to put asses in seats he just because you know seats. the fact that there's a chance if you're a UT fan and you walk into that stadium. Peyton will be there. There's a chance that Peyton and Eli will both be there. Exactly. I mean, hell, you may find Archie, too. I mean, who the fuck knows? I mean, at this point, the whole damn Manning right. clan may be – they may take up a residency in I Austin do, for I, all I know. I think it's funny that – They've all went to different colleges. You know, Peyton to Tennessee, Eli to Old Where Venice. did Cooper go? Oh, God. I don't. Does anybody even care about Cooper? No, well, <laughs> yes and no, because Cooper is who's – Cooper is the father of who we're talking about. So, I feel yes. Does anybody care about Cooper? But Cooper – I noticed that Cooper was the only one that played a different position. What did Cooper play? Cooper was a highly recruited – Highly successful college receiver until really? concussions. Yes, okay. concussions I did not know is that. what got him. I, like Cooper was the the one off that I, I don't I remember didn't even know what about. college Cooper went to. So if somebody knows, then yeah, please by all feel means they free can to chime in. I'll find out. Give me a second. I'm gonna pull this shit. <laughs> what am I doing? I the Andrew know. Luck argument. I don't. I don't know about Andrew. That. I'm. I don't know. West Coast quarterbacks to me are yeah, kind of iffy. That's Stetson Bennett, thirty-five years old. <laughs> Stetson Bennett, who talk about how that dude got arrested? Got arrested for Jeez. what? Public intoxication? In Dallas of all in places. Dallas. How do you, I mean, with a, well, how no, do you hold get arrested on. With a name Dallas. like Stetson, yeah, you got to be arrested in Dallas. Not true. Dude's name is Stetson. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but that so you're a somewhat New Orleans Saints fan. Correct? Yes. Do you have any thoughts on Sean Payton? I, I feel that the Broncos and, uh, are retarded. But what about the Saints? I feel the Saints cashed in. Right. I feel the Saints got the better end yeah. of that deal. For sure. By far. For sure. So, those that don't know, if you haven't heard, for whatever, for whatever so ungodly you, reason, you are, Sean Payton is the head coach. You are technically wrong in your previous statement. Two of the Mannings actually went to the same university. Oh, yeah? Cooper and Eli both, both went to Ole Miss. <laughs> <laughs> quit in high school due to neck. Cooper did not quit in high school. Condition. Same thing affected Peyton. Well, yeah, but that was way later in Peyton's career. <laughs> that it became a big ordeal, Yep, at least. Um, so, and the Broncos... Actually, you're still wrong. What do you mean? Archie went to Ole Miss. Eh, fuck him. So Archie, Eli, and Cooper all went Look to at the Peyton. Same. Peyton the rebel, the yeah. black sheep of the family. And the sad thing about it is, what do Peyton <laughs> and Arch have in common? What? Both of them went to schools with a, are going to schools where the predominant logo is a big T and they're orange and white. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> but it's so true. But I'll admit, Ole Miss's colors are really pretty. <laughs> but I, I like Ole Miss's colors. I do. I like Ole Miss's colors. So, Sean Payton is now the Broncos head coach. Yes, he is. Good or bad for Russell Wilson? Knowing th- what he's done with Drew Brees. I feel it's a good thing because I feel Russell Wilson and Drew Brees are very similar. I don't feel that Russell Wilson has the IQ that Drew Brees does, but I feel as far as the physical aspect – you're getting you're a little bit more athletic with Russell Wilson than what you are Drew Brees, but same pocket presence, same height. Yeah. So I feel that's a good I feel it's a good move for Sean. For sure. I mean I, I don't like it. I kinda wish he'd come back to New Orleans, but I knew that was never gonna happen. 
just yeah. because of the way just because the way he left. Right. So. No, oh, and that's the. I think that's why New Orleans needed to cash in now when they did and get the picks that they did. Because I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's like the 30th pick in this year's draft, uh, a second round in next year's, and then they swapped like third and fourth rounds in the following year or next year or something like that. I don't know. There's a bunch of picks involved. From what I understand, uh, Sean Payton is going to get paid anywhere from like 17 to $20 million. They don't have to disclose uh, coaches – coaches salaries nor do they hit the salary cap so they could technically pay him whatever the hell they want yeah and uh the walton family i can't remember which one of them but they own walmart yeah uh it's like a cousin brother sister Donald, uncle aunt yeah, dog yeah. thing i don't remember which one aunt dog now owns the broncos so they yeah. could pretty much just pay him whatever they want right, they i don't can. it doesn't no, matter um we're gonna talk super bowl next week so i'm gonna save the two bottom notes that i have okay for next week uh, February 17th, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania comes out. I'm pretty excited about that one. Um, Wednesday, Wakanda Forever came out on Disney Plus, if you have Disney Plus. <gasps> Did it? I'm going to watch it this weekend. I need, yeah, Brayden, I need to watch that one. I'm going to watch the Wakanda Forever. Yeah, I need to watch that one. I seen um, it I, I'm kind of I'm curious on how Marvel takes Ant-Man and Wasp because, as you know, I, I don't know if you know this or not, you may not know this, but based on, if you follow the comic line, this is around the time where Kang the Conqueror yep. makes he's, his spoiler alert. He's the he's the new Thanos. He's the he's the newest and most powerful enemy. Yes, and, he and shows I, up in Ant Man and the Wasp. Yes, and I feel like it's going to lead you into the second Avengers, which goes into the Kang Dynasty part, and right. then you you kind of drop back and punt a little bit because I'm I'm also anxious to see what happens when Marvel reboots. The Fantastic Four, and they are going to. Yes, from what they're I going understand. to. They're, they're going to. It's already. I, I know it's I'm, been pushed back like once or twice. It's been pushed back once or twice, but they've already casted part of the yeah. Fantastic Four. So as you know, Reed, and it did show Reed up. Richards is John Krasinski. He showed up in uh, Doctor Strange. Yes, uh, multiverse, multiverse madness. madness. Yep. So there are hints and things coming. There and are. I know it. I know the show is coming. I just don't know when or how they're going to do it. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Marvel goes. I mean, Marvel's made, and they're, let's be honest, they've made boo of money off the first tons. Fa- first and I know they're, phases. they're rebooting a lot of the Netflix old series. They are. Uh, Daredevil. Yes, Daredevil's getting a reboot. I know for sure because he showed up in the last Spider-Man. Yep. He showed up in a couple different You've places. you got um, Secret Invasion that's fixing right. to hit Disney+, Plus, which is kind of the prequel to The Secret Wars, which is kind of where... Right before the whole Avengers Kang Dynasty thing yeah. kicks off, that kind of goes into it. Yeah. So that's part of quote unquote phase five. There's a lot. I mean, it, and, and I feel like they're diving, they've dove into the correct area because this l- could legitimately go on. Oh, it could go on forever. And, I mean, you and guys like us and our kids, and I mean, there's it's it could never stop. No, it'll go on forever. Because if cause, we watch it and Braden watches it and then. I mean, we could legitimately pass this on and it continue to be a big, the big thing. Well, not just that. It, it wouldn't surprise me if some point Marvel decides to bring back the Punisher series, which I know yeah. it was a Netflix series, which has got John Bethel from yes. The Walking Dead fame. He's right. in that. Um, they've already rebooted it twice because yeah. the original Punisher in the late 80s was Dolph Lundgren. Right. Then it went to Thomas Jane. Now it's in the, the hands of John Bethel. Um You've got several, from what I understand, several, without watching Wakanda Forever, you've got several of the newer, quote-unquote, superheroes. Because yeah. you've got Iron Ironheart makes her debut. And, and R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman. Yes, or, by far. Is I had, it Boseman? Yes, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, that, that's one thing that interests me about Wakanda Forever, and I, I'm going to watch it, I guess, probably this weekend, now that I know that it's on Disney+. Yeah, Plus. It's on, it went on Disney+. I'm Plus curious Wednesday. of how they carry that on. It's, I think Black Panther needs to be a bigger part of, it, of the whole it, ordeal. It does, and I feel it will, because I know from what I've read, without diving into too much of a spoiler, this particular episode of Black Panther focuses more on the women of Wakanda. Right. So you're, you're, Which they did a great job of in Avengers Well, Endgame. not just that. So Angela Bassett, who plays mm-hmm. the T'Challa's mom, mom yeah. 
is the first actress or actor from a Marvel movie to be nominated for a Oscar. Really? Yes. Did not. In her role in the Wakanda Forever. Very nice. So she's the first one out of all. And, I'm excited. And think about that because I mean, when you think of all the actors and actresses that have been in the Marvel, Robert Downey one Jr. through four, you got <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., um, Chris Evans, yeah. Scarlett Johansson, um, and and if Gwyneth you, Paltrow. I mean, there's been a slew. right because you can take it from an artistic standpoint, and you you take a step back, not just oh Robert Downey Jr. was. But look at what he did in that very first one, being in that cave, being locked up, the his overall look, how he took a – there's some artistic standpoints from, oh, from sure, what yeah. you could say a lot of these people should have been nominated. Not just a superhero movie. Look at it from an artistic standpoint. That Widow Jane is awesome. That blend, I'm glad he sent that to us. I'm excited about it. Have a good night, Duff. Duff's apparently got to get up early yeah, and go to work in the morning. Uh, so we're about to start wrapping it up. Yeah, we're getting close. We're getting close to our two hour. Um, two I want to do. Mark. I do want to say thank you, Jeremy. Yes. That widow Jane, uh, thirteen and ten year Longhorn single barrel select blend, awesome, loved it. The whistle pig and Isaac Bowman was interesting. I I think it blended really well together. I like the widow Jane. Yeah. The it's Jane, really the, good. I'm going to step out the real Jane, quick. The Jane on Jane's a pretty good thing And then I'll me. pick something, and we can do a last call. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. He got to go break stick again. So can we talk about how badass my shirt is? Because it literally looks like a, my daughter, bless her heart. She's like, Daddy, why do you have a Dunkin' Donuts shirt? And I was like, sweetie, that's I know I'm a fat guy, but that's not a Dunkin' Donuts shirt. You need to look a little closer. And she's like, Oh, it says whiskey on it. And she's five, mind you. So it's amazing to me that my daughter already knows how to read the word whiskey at five. So shout out to me being a super dad. But, yes, it, it does very look – it looks very Dunkin' Donuts-ish. I got the idea, honestly, from a friend of the show, that one dude, Ryan, he has one that just says drunken grown-ups. I took it a step further because mine says America runs on whiskey at the bottom of it since we are a quote-unquote whiskey review podcast – I was talking about how Madison mistook my shirt for a Dunkin' Donuts shirt. No, oh, it does definitely look Until like she one. read the word whiskey, which I don't know if it right. scares me that she's five and she knows what the she word whiskey it. looks like. So I had every intention of wearing my Life and Times of Corn hoodie tonight since it's pretty chilly. Here. I love the fact that you actually took the Life and Times of Corn and made it into a T-shirt. Yes, and you can find it at FunctionYourWay.live. Yes, you can. Uh, along with all of our other merch, we have a brand new Speakeasy shirt on there. Uh, check out our Facebook reel. It has it on there. You yes. can see it, a yes. quick preview of it. But uh, Braley, my youngest daughter, wore my Life and Times of Corn hoodie last night. Oh. So it kind of got knocked out, which was fine because, like I said, Jordan Day 2023 right. 23, had to wear the black and the red. There you go. So, um, but, yeah, check us out, functionyourway.live. Oh, uh, for sure, all yeah. of our merch is on there. If you all have any ideas for merch, if you have something you want to see on there, don't hesitate to hit us up. We are always willing to try something new. Can you – do you have, you have the keyboard and stuff? Yeah. I do have the Can keyboard. you tag Southern Drinking Club in this? Because I want to get oh, with okay. them on some stuff coming For up. sure. In the near future because I know they've been kind of interested to do uh, – there you go, right there on top. Yeah, so we've actually had some really good conversation. Yes, we have. Don't and, know, and we've got some – They're at it. Southern Drink they're Club at, is out of Houston. They're out of Houston, yes. Um, those I, guys are awesome. I have their big. I have their big boy Glenn right here in front of me. Yes, you do. I like the big boy Glenn. Um, dang it, his name has slipped my mind. Joseph? No, jo- no, no. Joseph's from he, Old Dumble. He made a joke about it being horribly. His name is Jeremy because he Jeremy. wrote Jerry. He, yeah, because yes. you thought it was Jerry. I thought it was Jerry. Yes. Uh, yeah, Jeremy. His that, name is Jeremy as well. Awesome from Southern Drink Club. I almost, hopefully, I almost wore my uh, Bourbon Hound hat I wanna, on set tonight. Hopefully, we'll we'll have some stuff coming with him. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm excited. I like I love that dude. He was fun to talk to. Yeah, he was super uh, fun to talk to. And I want to get out there. I want to get out there and, and visit kind of that whole area. Yeah, see I want to go doing. to like old. I want to check out Joseph at Old Humble. Um, I hear they're doing some interesting newer stuff. Yeah. He has a. 72 hour blackout bourbon that's coming out in the near really? future and a gangster Mac. 
Really? Yes. So. Oh, Gangster Mac. Gangster Mac. I figured you'd appreciate that one from Hell your, yeah. uh, for, since you're Ooh, such a that was way too much. avid Astros fan. I, I like have. this Wood of Jane. I'm going to probably. Last call it with that one? Yeah, probably. Because right. I still got a little bit of the. Um, Just FYI, the, air the gold, high gold by is the way. Still good. Or high gold. I don't know why I say high air gold. High gold is still good. I let my, I've let mine breathe for a little bit. I'm going to re. Do you have a uh, um, out. Are I can you ready? pull one up real quick if you want to ramble yeah. for um, a slight little bit. So, like I said, check us out, check out all the merch at functionyourway.live. You can check us out on anywhere you get your podcast. Um, just search at Function Your Way or the Functional Gentleman. Yep. We're putting podcasts up weekly so that you can listen to us on your drive home while you're cleaning the house, wherever you can find us, wherever you want to listen to us. If you can't, just sit down and watch the show because I know everybody doesn't have that capability. Yeah, they don't have two hours to spend with us. I mean, right. we, we would like to. You can stop. Too, you can start. It's a podcast. Just listen to it. Yep. Um, we've got a lot of great things coming up. Hopefully, we're going to have a lot more mail calls. And I know By I'm the excited way, we're for gonna, the future. We're going to be doing something with a, a certain podcast. It's called Cut Light Smoke. Oh. Okay. That, oh, that's a new one. That, well, it kind of goes along with the, the Zeal Cigar thing I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. They're one in the same. I found that okay. out today. So there's going to be some stuff going on there. We're going to have some stuff coming Next in. week. Yes. Next week we will be going live on Saturday. Yes. Not Friday. Yes. Uh, tentatively. 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 It is scheduled for 6 p.m. Central. Yep. Next time. Clint, be good. Yes. We'll be here Saturday. Um, so that's the plan Saturday. As of right now, 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. May or may not change. We'll make sure to keep everybody updated on the Facebook. Right, for sure. Stay tuned. Um, but Saturday, not Friday, Roy has a previous engagement. So we're making a little bit of change. Plus, it gives us an opportunity to go Pre-gaming yes. for the Super Bowl. I got to do grown-up stuff Friday yeah, night. Yeah, well. But, I mean, I'm excited. We can do we can pre-game for yes. the Super Bowl. Yes, we can. We can talk about the uh, Pro Bowl that's happening this weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll recap the Pro Bowl. I am not. I don't know how much I'm going to watch it because really, I'm going to be I, honest. I, the fact that they switched to a flag football game kind of disturbs me. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, I'm in, but I'm excited for the Super Bowl. We always do the Super Bowl at my house. Yes. I, I break out Hector the Projector. Hector! All, all 120 inches of his glory. Yes. So That's we'll be what doing she that. Said. Exactly. God, I hope not. <laughs> I'll never please that woman. Nope. <laughs> but so y'all stay tuned. God. We'll make sure we post it. Keep y'all updated on when we're going live next week. Um, other than that, are you ready? I am. All right, let's do it. Last call for alcohol. Tonight's last call is courtesy of a dear friend of mine, Mr. Ernest Hemingway. Oh. Never delay kissing a pretty girl or opening a bottle of whiskey. Neither of which I have a problem with. Nope. <sighs> Still good. Still good. Still good stuff. As always, we've been the Functional yep. Gentlemen. Hashtag Function Your yep. Way. Hashtag for the fans. Yep. Hashtag 2023 Year of the Gentlemen. Yep. Y'all have been great. We've been great. Function Your Way.live. Function Your Way.live for all the merch. 